Happy New Year, everybody. 2020 is in the rearview mirror. I couldn't be happier. I took the last two weeks off, spent the holidays with my family without interruptions and distractions, and I have to say, I am feeling great. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Mookie from the Mook Nation. While I was on vacation, I actually had time to just sit down and play a game. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but in the tech and game industry, you really don't get to just sit down and play things without having to break them down and analyze them, so this was quite a relief. Now, I knew I was going to have limited time before the work would begin again, so I had to think real carefully about what I was going to play with my free time. And I'd been following this chatter about Venice Unleashed, a community-oriented Battlefield 3 modding platform that was going to give you back control of your gaming experience. And with it literally releasing just days before in mid-December, now was the perfect time to actually try to enjoy something without having to break it down for analysis right away. So I did. And after the poor experience I'd been having with this certain first-person shooter title called War Identity, uh, I couldn't have been happier. So, if you're new to gaming, or if you've just been living under a rock for like a decade, Battlefield 3 was originally released back in October 2011. It was developed by DICE under that EA umbrella, and it's enjoyed its fair share of success as one of the premier first-person shooters of its time. But as it always happens, new games came out, the years went on, and that pesky battle log, yeah, causing the player base to just begin fading. But just like with EA's NFL Madden games, new titles did not mean better games, and the community has been grown hungry for quality first-person shooter titles over the years. Now enter Venice Unleashed, or as I've been calling it, Battlefield Unleashed. They bring back a quality game with the ability for we the people to make it better. Because even though EA doesn't believe it, the truth is nobody knows what they want in a game more than the people who actually play them. Hashtag fix Madden franchise. All right. That's my last crack at Madden for now, but make no mistake about it, we'll be making a video addressing that game here shortly. So make sure you hit that subscribe button along with that little bell icon to make sure you get notified every time a new Mook Nation video is uploaded. Now with all that being said, let's jump in and take a look at the 5 things you need to know to determine whether or not you're going to give up that valuable hard drive space along with all your precious time. Let's go! Number one, ease of use. Now, I know that if you're the casual gamer, you already have doubts on whether or not you're going to give this experience a try due to the fact that there's modding. I understand that modding has this dark cloud looming over the word due to the risks and complications that can often be associated with it. But realistically, unless you're starting a server here, you're not actually doing any of the modding. I haven't found a single way that you can break your game using this application. You don't have to go rooting through no game files, you don't have to add anything, you don't have to remove anything. You simply just download a desktop application. You create an account, download and run Battlefield 3 at least once via Origin, then you install the VU app that you had downloaded. When you're prompted, you'll sign into your EA Origin account just to verify that you own the game. Then you'll create a soldier, which is just a player profile that you can have up to four of. Now you're ready to find and join a server. So if you're just looking to jump in and play, and find a server that has people and the mods that you want, the interface is clean, functional, so I recommend using the filter to narrow it down to the minimum of one player so you avoid staring at pages of empty servers. Now when you join a server, Vue actually downloads the mods for you, so you don't have to go searching through sketchy websites and adding files to directories and so on and so forth. It's by far the easiest modding experience that I've ever seen. Now keep in mind that when you're joining a server, you are playing with the mods the host has put on the server, and you can't just select individual mods that you want. Now if you want to create and customize your own server, well you can, but it's not recommended that you do so using your own computer or your own servers. Uh, you can use your own server, of course, but you could also rent out third-party servers. For convenience purposes, VU does have partners that are willing to rent out servers that offer some additional protections and services. I didn't mess around with this feature, but I would be open to start in a server for friends of the channel if there was enough interest. Number two, functionality. Now, as we're technically looking at a platform, more so than a game, it can be tricky to tell you about this experience. While I want to tell you about all the fantastic gameplay, and all the things you can do, I still have to break down the application for exactly what it is. So I have spent a lot of time over the years playing with mods on the likes of Skyrim, Fallout, even Minecraft. And I have to say, for this being a brand new platform, it does seem to be an extremely, insanely stable experience. In all my hours playing on as many different servers as I could, I could never encounter a single technical issue. There were some mod downloads that seemed suspiciously slow, but never did they fail to load. And even on the most modded servers, I never had a game crash. And if you've ever done any modding, then you would know that that alone is a hell of an accomplishment. As I said before, VU handles the mod installs for people joining servers. It makes it the most convenient way for the casual gamer to get to enjoy the world of modding. 
the server list is insanely clean and the UI functions exactly as you'd expect it to, so there's absolutely nothing stopping you from jumping directly into a game. All units, all units. Number three, the gameplay. Now that we have all the technical mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's talk about the gameplay. The very first thing that popped into my brain was why does Battlefield 3 seem such a hell of a lot better than Battlefield 1 or 5. Within seconds I realized the old cliche that they don't make them like they used to is absolutely true in the case of Battlefield. So for the most part, every server I played on had no modifications to the actual core mechanics of Battlefield 3. So you won't be in for any surprises there. Well, except for the fact that you'll wonder if Battlefield 3 always felt as good, or has the modern era of first-person shooter titles, lackluster gameplay just made it feel better. But how are the mods? Well, I really didn't get to see a wide variety of mods, as the platform still really new. But the enhanced graphics were amazing. The night mode was fantastic. There were many other small mods that mostly went unnoticed, as they just changed game modes and a few tweaks here and there. Soon, the hype is going to be around the realism mod. Now, with Battlefield 3 already feeling more realistic than most modern titles, I cannot wait to see what this mod has to bring to the table. But all in all, Battlefield 3 running on this platform feels better than any first-person title that I have played in years. I cannot express how enjoyable this was to play. If we get more people onto this platform, this could be the best first-person shooter experience available right now. Number 4, the player base. Now as fun as this experience is, unfortunately there's limited people playing, which means you'll often find yourself joining the same few servers just to make sure you're playing with more than two people. I was always able to choose between Team Deathmatch or large conquest servers with a high population, but they often play the same maps. In order for Venice Unleashed to reach its full potential, we're going to need the first person shooter fan base to become aware of this platform, and to be properly informed of how it works so that the idea of mods and modding does not detour the casual gamer because this really is an experience for all first-person shooter fans. Number 5, the price. The one thing that most first-person shooter titles have in common these days is the price tag. While Call of Duty did provide us with a free experience, it's not that traditional first-person shooter game that I grew up playing. It's fun, sure, but it is what it is. It's a battle royal. I personally do not care for the battle royal genre as much, and I prefer the traditional team deathmatch or the conquest style game modes. And to get that, bam, 60 bucks, plus a battle pass, and many other cosmetics, because you don't want your friends thinking you're some basic bitch, do you? I'm kidding. You don't have friends, but maybe you would if you buy this elite operator pack, or this super shiny skin. Alright, you get the point, but here's the thing. Battlefield 3 is like 10 bucks, there's no battle pass BS, so really I can't think of a reason this is not a smoking deal on a quality title. There are some free-to-play games that provide a good experience, but not a damn one of them is going to provide you this AAA experience. Alright, Mookie, but is it worth it? Assuming you don't own Battlefield 3, then we have to look at this like it's a $10 game slash experience. It's my job to help you determine whether or not you should fork over your hard-earned money, give up that insanely valuable hard drive space, and commit your precious time. And the truth is, I cannot think of a single reason you should. This experience made me feel the love for first-person shooters that I haven't felt since Black Ops, or maybe even Halo 3. It is, in my opinion, this is the best first-person shooter experience you can have right now, so long as you're not looking for the Battle Royale mode. With that said, I'd give the Venice Unleashed Battlefield experience a 4 out of 5. This is the best rating I've ever given a first-person shooter title in my short time on YouTube, and I feel really good about it. It's easy to use, completely functional, amazingly fun, growing in population, and it's an insanely affordable price, assuming you don't already own it, at which point it's just monster free. I'm not sure we'll get a better overall experience at this price point for quite some time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that like button, leave a comment, share with some friends, talk about it at work, have your grandma pass it around the nursing home. Hell, I don't know. Anything helps. We appreciate it. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon. We have some new content coming here early in 2021. You're going to love it. So make sure you're staying up to date with the latest Mook Nation content. I am Mookie, and on behalf of the Mook Nation, I want to say thank you so much. Stay safe, my friends, and until next time, peace.